All right, on there they start reading out the scorecards at the end. Was there any point where you felt a little iffy that the, the fight wasn't maybe going to go your way? I, I, not, I didn't feel iffy at all until I heard 30-27 for him. I thought someone was tripping, but I'm not a judge. I'm a fighter, you know what I'm saying? I fight my ass off, and uh, hopefully they saw that. Definitely, in your mind, which rounds do you think that you that you took? Do you think it, at least the first two because of the takedown? I think I took. I think I took every round. The only thing he did was take me down within the last thirty seconds, which is never good because judges aren't fighters. They they probably don't know what they're looking at most of the time. A lot of them, and uh, they've had to watch ten different fights. They don't really give a shit about probably. And um, I'm like the eleventh out of twelve. So by now they're pretty much probably cashed out, and they just saw somebody on top of somebody in the end of the fight. So they went, oh yeah, probably him. Like. I don't know. I'm pretty uh, pretty annoyed about that, but um, I'm really happy with the win. So I was going to say, you, I can definitely feel that you're annoyed. Was it about your performance? There was a part that that you maybe weren't happy with, or was it just the fact that that there was any doubt in anybody's mind? A little bit of both, I guess. Yeah, uh, I'm really happy with the win. Uh, I feel like I earned that win. I won. I won that fight 100%. Uh, I, I worked my ass off for this. It feels really good to to get this win, but. Um, I'm not here to be a junkyard fighter. I'm not here to be a tough fighter. I'm not here to be a fighter that has wars. I'm here to be crisp and clean and long and dangerous. And when I fight, I want people to be sort of like in awe. I want people to know I'm the baddest, the most technical dude around. And uh, tonight, because of Bermuda's style, probably, he pulled me into a, a slugfest. And I'm not scared of a slugfest, you know. I'll win one of those too. But um, I would rather I would rather have a little different performance. But I'll take the win. The win was beautiful. I'm, I'm so blessed and, and I'm so thankful to be where I'm at. And I know this is one of those fights, and you said before, you know, the ranking just seems to be confusing, but you got to think, again, after a grueling fight like that in a performance, it's time for the UFC to give you a ranking. It's time. It's been time. I'm, I'm a top 10 fighter right now, and I'm the best 45 in the world. I'm going to keep proving that. So I'm a top 10 fighter right now. I'll be a top five fighter by mid-year, and I'll be fighting for my world title by the end of the year, period. End of 2018, I'll be challenged for that belt. Um, but it's weird. Uh, Fuck, I'm not going to get emotional right now. Uh, man, all I really give a shit about is making the people around me proud. Like, you can keep the numbers. Like, it's a weird thing. Uh, I felt the same way after I beat Hackerin. He was number 11. I beat him on three weeks' notice, and I didn't get a number next to my name. It made me realize that I don't give a shit about being ranked to people I never met. Like, I'm here to I'm here to give back to people who invested in me. Danny Castillo, Uriah Faber. Team Alpha must saved my life when I was 19. And uh, putting up with me has been a long-term investment. And uh, I'm just happy to, to give back, you know, How to, happy to finally were, cash in on that. How happy were your coaches afterwards? I know you're Ryan, these guys, they, I mean, it's got to feel good to be able to look at them and see that win that you've been trying to get for them for so long. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, I have my coaches who are like my older brothers, you know. I have a new guy on my coaching staff who's now become a good friend of mine. Uh, I have Uriah who, like I told you, probably saved my life when I was 19 by bringing me under his wing. And I got my two best friends sitting next to him, like two childhood friends. Like, I wouldn't have survived my childhood without them. I probably spent six, six out of seven school, you know, six out of seven nights of the week in school. I spent at their house, like, and they're all sitting there and watching me get this win is like uh, to celebrate with them is almost better than win, you know. And I know you got to get a shout out to the grandma, you know that. You know, it's her birthday. I'm sure it was a great motherfucker. I'm not gonna about. To, I'm not about to get emotional right now. <laughs> but did you get a chance to talk with her, maybe afterwards? No, I haven't. I haven't actually. Uh, I got a surprise for her though, but I haven't got a chance to talk to her. Um, you know, I'm, I, I get kind of weird around my fights. I don't like to be around my coaches and my my two best friends. I don't like to be around the people that I've been in fights with my whole life. And uh, I block out my girlfriend, who somehow puts up with me. I block out my mom. I'm short with my mom for a week and a half straight because I'm just on the. I'm short with my little sisters. I'm short with everyone because uh, I get close to a fight and I just want to be around the people that I've been getting in fights with my whole life. So now I gotta, I gotta do, I got some making up to do. You know, I gotta hug my mom, hug my grandma, take my little sisters out, spend a bunch of money on them. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Just a couple more. Uh, the leg kicks that Dennis was coming out with looked like they were doing some damage towards him. Was it ever a point where you're starting to worry about how it was going to maybe affect your stance and things of that sort? No, I don't feel shit. No one can hurt me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I should have checked the leg kicks, but I didn't because I was too busy trying to jab him in his face. So uh, we'll go back. We'll fix it. I'll work with my Muay Thai coach, Tyler Wombles, at Classic Fight Team, and uh, we'll make sure we check the kicks next time. But, I mean, I've had fights where I haven't eaten a single kick 
I've had fights where I fought for 15 minutes. I've had fights where I fought for 13, 15 seconds. Um, for whatever reasons, your shin and your feet always feet always seem to hurt. So, I mean, it's no different than any other fight. I should have checked the kicks, but it's not like they did any real damage. Like I'm cool. I'm walking around. What makes next, what makes sense for you next, or who should I say makes sense? Someone with a with a single digit number next to their name. I mean, Team Alpha Male. We got a at this point, we got a monopoly on that top ten. Um, but there's like 80 dudes in the division. Like we'll, we'll find people to beat up, you know. But right now, me, Elkins, Emmett. Uh, I think Rick Glenn will probably come back and, and beat somebody up and get right back into that top 15 rankings too. Like, none of you motherfuckers are safe at 45. Not not one of you. How do you celebrate the win? I celebrate the same way after every fight. I eat pizza in my room with the people I'm close to. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's such a weird thing. I can't, I don't want this to sound wrong, but man, the deeper I get into this game, the more I realize I don't give a shit about anyone except for the people that I'm close with, you know? It's like, that's the reason I do this, so. That's all I'm gonna celebrate with, you know? Um, I'm buy some pizza for everybody, we're gonna celebrate. Congrats on the win. Thank Go you. Enjoy your pizza. Appreciate it.